the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, a key meeting takes place between representatives of the IMF and the President with the primary topic of discussion being the release of the fourth tranche of IMF funding. The President appoints a special ministerial committee to address potential global and Iranian impact on the country while petrol and LP gas rates remain unchanged despite the rising tensions. After experiencing five consecutive days of losses, the Colombo Stock Exchange turns positive, reversing its negative trend. Meta beat market expectations for second quarter revenue, issuing a rosy sales forecast for the third quarter. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayaduni. Good evening and thank you for joining us. A key meeting took place between representatives of the International Monetary Fund and President Rani Vikramasinghe today. The primary topic of discussion was the prospective release of the fourth tranche of IMF funding as reported by State Minister of Finance Shahan Seymasinghe. Additionally, the IMF delegation met with opposition leader Sajid Premadasa yesterday afternoon. Sri Lanka is awaiting the assessment from the IMF on the compliance of an in-principle private credit restructuring deal on the debt sustainability assessment. Also awaited is a decision from the Official Creditor Committee on the comparability of treatment on the private creditor deal. Sri Lanka struck a deal involving an initial 28% haircut, which will reduce to 15% if gross domestic product expands above expectations. Lead of the opposition Sajid Premadasa states that he informed the IMF that Sri Lanka's agreement with Global Lender would be revised under a future mandate. The opposition leader made this statement during a meeting with the Executive Committee of the Government Medical Officers Association. Secretary to the Ministry of Industries, Sharan Thavira Singha, announced that the National Industry Policy, along with five-year strategic plan for 2023 to 2027, has been prepared and submitted to the Department of National Planning. Addressing the press briefing titled Two Years of Progress and the Way Forward, held at the Presidential Media Center yesterday, the Secretary noted that the final draft for amending the Industrial Promotion Act has been submitted to the Attorney General's Department for approval, ensuring it meets current and future needs. This initiative aims to establish a globally competitive national industry base. By 2030, the policy aims to increase the manufacturing sector's contribution to GDP from 16% to 20%, raise the role of entrepreneurship in the workforce from 2.8% to 7%, and boost the shares of industrial exports in GDP from 14% to 20%. Addressing further, he stated that the Minister of Industry has introduced a registration system for manufacturing industries, with 3,925 industries registered by June of this year. Industry registration is now available online, allowing for global access. Sri Lanka has appointed three ministerial committees to address potential global and Iranian impact on the country amid fears of an escalating Middle East war after the assassination of a Hamas political leader in Iran. Let's now dive into the analysis on how the Middle East tensions can impact the Sri Lankan economy and what to expect. The President's media division conveyed that arrangements will be done to appoint the committees as a preliminary measure to address the security and economic pressures that may affect Sri Lanka, considering the potential developments in the Middle East and globally. Addressing a gathering of provincial councillors yesterday, the President stated that if a war breaks out, it would result in a loss of revenue for the country, making it difficult for Sri Lanka to handle such a situation. The president said the government is taking proactive measures to address any situation that may arise. Meanwhile, regardless of the global oil prices climbing up as a result of the tensions, the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation announced that there will be no fuel price revisions for the month of August. The state-owned enterprise said in a statement that the current retail prices will remain unchanged and the CPC's monthly revision of Sepetco retail fuel prices will not be taking place this time. Litrogas Lanka chairman Mudita Pires also stated that they have decided not to revise the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders for the month of August. Laughs Gas PLC also announced that the company will not be revising domestic LP gas and fuel prices for this month. 
The nightly business report connected with economic analyst Demantha Matthews to gain an in-depth understanding of how these ongoing global tensions might affect the Sri Lankan economic landscape and what we can expect in the future. So, in the Middle Eastern territory, the escalation of uh, violence could be uh, something detrimental for uh, Sri Lanka. So, if you take uh, the escalation of war situation that is uh, currently taking place, uh, now this has uh, already we have seen some amount of uh, rise in commodity prices uh, which means the basically the crude oil prices have started to already move up. Now this is uh, significantly uh, negative for Sri Lanka because that could uh, indirectly affect uh, Sri Lanka. At the moment we have uh, kept our uh, fuel prices uh, stable for the month of August but with the rise in uh, crude oil prices we may have to uh, increase our pricing in the coming months. So uh, another issue is on the side of the uh, that uh, tea because uh, Middle East is an important uh, buyer for us and uh, when uh, this there is an escalation of uh, war situation uh, there could be a less uh, demand for tea uh, because the expenditure side is likely to get higher in that territory so the importance for tea uh, could slightly reduce now uh, when the demand for tea uh, comes down the prices of tea also could come down so that is also detrimental for Sri Lanka so as an economy the balance of payments is likely to get affected with the uh, imports uh, going up and uh, exports uh, slightly getting impacted and coming down so which will invariably uh, affect the balance of payments uh, overall situation and that is a detri detrimental impact uh, towards Sri Lanka. So uh, we, we need to be uh, very uh, concerned about the situation. I think uh, even the president has appointed a, a committee to uh, monitor the uh, situation and uh, there is uh, no real uh, preventive action that we could take but uh, we need to take note that uh, there is going to be a serious uh, detrimental impact uh, if this uh, situation further escalates and uh, it has starts getting uh, other impacts to uh, Sri Lanka. Let's go for a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nali Business Report. After experiencing five consecutive days of losses, the Colombo Stock Exchange turned positive today, reversing its negative trend. Both indices ended today's market session with gains bringing an end to the extended period of market downturn. For a detailed summary of today's trading session, let's turn to Minal Vikramage, joining from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a positive note compared to the previous trading session. Investors, while showing signs of reluctance to participate due to the volatile market conditions, were on a slightly positive sentiment as well. The market ended at 11,439 points, marking a 33-point increase from the previous trading session with a turnover of 840 million rupees. The S&P SL20 index also experienced an upward movement of 20.25 points to end the day at 3,285 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors, with high turnovers recorded on John Keel's Holdings and Haley's Fabric PLC. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing, Blue Diamonds Jewelry, Mahali Ridge Hotel, Muscali Plantations, and Chris World PLC. The top five losers for the day were UB Finance, Lee Hedges PLC, Tess Agro Non Voting. Commercial Credit and SoftLogic Finance. 
The Colombo Consumer Price Index fell 0.5 index points to 194.7 points in the month of July. The index is now slightly below the level seen in December 2023. To get a detailed analysis on this, let's now go to Nethmi Fernando joining us from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The CCPI inflation decreased to negative 0.5% on a month-on-month -month basis with the increase in inflation of food group to 0.03% and decrease in inflation of non-food group to 0.47% respectively. Core CCPI inflation on a month-on-month -month basis increased and recorded at 0.3% and on a year-over-year -year basis, it remains stagnant at 4.4%. Increase in value changes per food group were reported for fresh fruit, vegetables, coconut oil, rice and eggs as top 5 segments. And value decreases in non-food items were reported in housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels and transportation. The inflation on a year-over-year -year basis increased to 2.4% in July 2024 from 1.7% recorded in June 2024. Year-over-year -year inflation of food group increased to 1.5% in July 2024 while non-food group increased to 2.8% in July 2024 from 1.8% recorded in June. NCPI for June 2024 increased to 2.4% compared to 1.6% which was recorded in May 2024. Increase in inflation was mainly driven by the price incline in both food and non-food commodities. Accordingly, year-over-year -year food inflation decreased to 1.9% in June compared to 0.5% recorded in May 2024 while year-over-year non-food inflation increased to 2.7% in June compared to 2.4% recorded in May 2024. NCPI core inflation increased to 0.1% in June 2024 whilst on a year-over-year -year basis increased to 3.9%. Gold prices steadied in Asian trade today after surging close to record highs in the prior session after the Federal Reserve flagged the possibility of an interest rate cut in September. Spot gold steadied at $2,446.41 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.7% to $2,490.15 an ounce. The yellow metal also saw increased safe haven demand amid heightened concerns over a bigger war in Middle East after the killing of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. Oil prices rose in Asian trade today, extending a sharp rebound from the prior session as the killing of Hamas leader in Iran kept fears of a bigger Middle East war largely in play. Brent oil futures expiring in October rose 0.5% to $81.24 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 0.6% to $77.30 a barrel. Focus was also squarely on a meeting of the Organization of Petroleum petroleum exporting countries and allies for more cues on the cartel's plans for production. Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. At commercial bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased from 296 rupees and 67 cents to 296 rupees and 69 cents, while the selling rate is unchanged at 306 rupees and 50 cents. Let's observe the rupee's performance in the global market now. break now corporate wool coming on the other side this is the nyla business report
Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Hamas Holding PLC announced its financial results for the first quarter, which ended on the 30th of June 2024, demonstrating resilience in a challenging economic environment. The group's consolidated revenue was 25.5 billion rupees, alongside operating profits of 1.9 billion rupees and earnings of 0.9 billion rupees. The revenue decrease compared to the previous year was largely due to downward price adjustments and subdued consumer spending, exacerbated by extended holidays in the first two months of the quarter. Despite the revenue dip, the group's profitability margins benefited from efficiency improvement initiatives and reduced finance costs. The consumer brand sector reported a revenue of 8.9 billion rupees, with operating profits of 0.8 billion rupees and earnings of 0.6 billion rupees. Despite lower revenue, margins improved due to supply chain efficiencies and productivity initiatives. The quarter saw a successful emphasis on personal care, with notable market presence in baby and feminine hygiene segments. Innovations included the launch of baby ceramy liquid soap and new variants of Goya soap. Atlas maintained its market leadership, expanding its share in both the premium and value-for-money segments. The healthcare sector performance delivered revenue of 16 billion rupees with operating profits of 1.3 billion rupees and earnings of 0.8 billion rupees. Profitability increased due to overhead optimization, improved working capital management and lower interest rates. In addition, the sector sustained its market-leading position despite market contraction and regulatory price reductions. Today, the Bank of Ceylon marked its 85th anniversary with grand celebrations at its head office located in Colombo 1. The event, which underscored the bank's rich history and its dedication to serving the people of Sri Lanka, was conducted primarily through a series of religious activities reflecting the nation's deep-rooted cultural traditions. The celebrations were graced by various esteemed guests, including the bank's chairman, the CEO, and the members of its board of directors. This gathering of dignitaries highlighted the importance of the occasion and the bank's standing in the financial community of Sri Lanka. Founded on the 1st of August 1939 by a British governor, the Bank of Ceylon has a storied legacy of revolutionizing the banking experience in Sri Lanka. In recognition of its outstanding services, the Bank of Ceylon was honored at Technovation 2024 for its digital banking branches. Additionally, the bank garnered international recognition where it was spotlighted by The Banker magazine as Sri Lanka's Bank of the Year in 2023. The Bank of Ceylon has also made it to the list of the top 1,000 banks in the world in 2024, a testament to its robust financial health and strategic growth. Namal Balachandra, a renowned clothing company in Sri Lanka, has taken a significant step in supporting the nation's athletes by providing special sets of attire for those participating in the Paris Olympics 2024. These outfits, meticulously crafted to showcase the rich cultural heritage and style of Sri Lanka. The provision of attire for the athletes and their coaches has been completed, ensuring that the team is well prepared for the international stage. A total of seven sets of attire have been provided, with an expenditure of 1 million rupees. Namal Balachandra Institute has highlighted that these sets of attire have been manufactured from high-quality fabric produced in Italy, ensuring not only cultural significance, but also top-notch quality and durability. The occasion of presenting these specially designed attires was graced by several distinguished figures from Namal Balachandra Institute including the chairman, Mr. Namal Balachandra, the chief executive officer, Mr. Mohanda Silva, and the operations manager, Mr. Mahesh Madhushankar, emphasizing the importance of this initiative and their support for the Sri Lankan athletes. Camera LK recently unveiled its brand new Camera LK service center at High Level Road, Colombo 5. This facility is dedicated to servicing and repairing Sony cameras, lenses, drones and accessories, further solidifying Camera LK's position as the premier destination for photography enthusiasts in the country. 
The grand opening was made even more special with the esteemed presence of the director and head of the digital imaging division at Sony. As the only authorized service center for Sony products in Sri Lanka, Camera LK is equipped with genuine Sony parts and staffed by a team of expert technicians, ensuring the highest quality of service. Salon Bank recorded a robust performance with a remarkable profit after tax for the six months of 2024 ending on the 30th of June. This reflects a remarkable 77% growth from compared to the same period in 2023. It showed a 76% increase over the previous year, despite challenging market conditions. The bank's net interest income decreased by 9.18% from 20,468 million rupees to 18,590 million rupees, with the net interest margin reducing from 5.17% to 5.76%. Net fee-based income grew by 6.29%, primarily due to increases in income from cards, remittances and other leading services. Total operating income stood at 23,279 million rupees, which is a decrease of 5.41% compared to the same period last year, largely due to a reduction in net interest margins. Other income comprising net gains from trading and derecognition of financial assets rose by 52%. As of the 30th of June of 2024, Salan Bank's total assets were recorded at 725 billion rupees, with loans and advances debt of impairment at 434 billion rupees. During the first half of 2024, the bank also expanded its Ceylon Pahasara Libraries initiative, opening 10 new libraries, bringing the total to 235, demonstrating its commitment to supporting education across the island. Let's take a short break now. Global updates right after this. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. Asian shares traded mixed Thursday as Tokyo's benchmark plunged as the US dollar sank against the yen. Japan's benchmark Nikkei 225 dipped 2.6% in morning trading to 38,094.24. Australia's S&P ASX 200 edged up 0.4% to 8,125.80, while South Korea's Cosby rose 0.5% to 2,785.56. Hong Kong's Hang Seng slipped 0.3% to 17,285.66, and the Shanghai Composite lost 0.3% to 2,931.50. On Wall Street now, U.S. stocks closed higher as chip stock rallied and the Federal Reserve kept interest rates unchanged while signaling possible easing in September if inflation cools. U.S. stocks closed higher on Wednesday as chip stocks rallied and the Federal Reserve indicated it could begin cutting interest rates in September. The Dow gained about a quarter percent. The S&P 500 climbed more than 1.5 percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq soared more than 2.6 percent. The Fed kept its benchmark overnight rate unchanged as it ended its two-day policy meeting, but opened the door to easing in September. Data released Wednesday showed July private payrolls increased far less than expected, indicating a loosening of persistent labor market tightness. The day's big market movers included Meta Platforms, the Facebook parent, which reported earnings after the close, ended the session up 2.5 percent before adding roughly 4 percent in after-hours trading, thanks to a rosy ad sales forecast which may help cover its AI-related costs. Leading AI chipmaker NVIDIA jumped nearly 13 percent, adding about $330 billion in market value, a record one-day gain for any company on Wall Street. Fellow chipmaker Advanced Micro Devices, which ignited the AI rally, gained more than 4 percent due to a robust 2024 sales forecast for its chips. Tech giants Apple and Amazon, which report earnings on Thursday, 
also closed higher. Meta beat market expectations for second quarter revenue and issued a rosy sales forecast for the third quarter, signaling that robust digital ad spending on its social media platforms can cover the cost of its AI investments. Facebook owner Meta Platforms beat forecasts over the second quarter and reckons the coming months could be even better. Revenue jumped 22% to just over $39 billion, exceeding expectations. The firm credited strong ad sales. It also said it was seeing the benefits of a project using AI to better target and deliver advertising. Like rivals, Meta is investing heavily in the technology, but it left its total expense forecast for the year unchanged at up to $99 billion. Meta's previous enthusiasm for the metaverse is working out less well. Losses at its Reality Labs unit, which makes VR headsets and smart glasses, widened to almost $4.5 billion. And the company says that number is set to increase meaningfully in the months ahead. Overall, however, Meta is feeling bullish. It now forecasts a third quarter revenue range that is ahead of analyst estimates. The robust outlook saw Meta shares rise close to 7% in US after hours trade. It also boosted ad-reliant social media peers like Snap, which gained 3%. That concludes today's Naila Business Report. Join us again tomorrow for more key updates from around the business world. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Good night.